What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the UCL. This week is the finals, the championship of the TGFA, and we are going up against Max of the Gotlandish Go-Goats, one of our few losses uh, throughout this entire season, and with good reason. He has easily, in my opinion, the best team in the league. Look at those stats. Um, those are top speeds uh, for each of his Pokemon. He's got such strong Pokemon, as demonstrated by the tier changes too, especially with Amoongus hopping up to OU. Such a great Mon, especially against my team. I was really, really scared and really torn throughout this entire team prep process, but yet I have made a team, and let's get through it. So first of all, we got Heatran. I didn't bring Heatran last time. Actually, my team this time around is very different from my team last time. And Heatran is here to deal with Amoongus, to deal with Porygon 2, to deal with Mandibuzz, to hit Beedrill if necessary, um, if Beedrill isn't running Drill Run, of course, uh, to maybe Toxic Starmie, I take a Scald. Um, I also can Oko Magnezone with Fire Blast. Um, I Toxic things on Switch-ins, and yeah, that's pretty much the point. It's bulky, it's got leftovers, and it's trying to wear down the foe with Toxic more so than anything else. Now, you might be thinking, why not run Magnastorm then? Well, I was originally planning on Magnastorm. It does a ton of damage, and more importantly, it does 12% at the end of each turn, and it prevents switch out. However, it's 75% accurate, and it's only got 8 PP, and I don't want to mess around with that. I don't want to have to play super, super safe and overly conservative with my Magnastorms. I'd much rather just throw out Fire Blasts, and I was also looking at Magnazone. Um, Magnazone, which can trap me, and Choice Specs, Hidden Power Ground, doesn't even Oko me, which is kind of ridiculous. But Fire Blast actually does Oko the typical um, Choice Specs Magnazone. So even if he runs Scarf and outspeeds me, um, what'll actually happen is I can outspeed him and Oko him. Now you're probably wondering why not run Flamethrower, because Fire Blast still has a chance to miss. Well, with Flamethrower, I have a 68% chance of Okoing um, a Choice Specs, or no, Choice Specs, Choice Scarf Magnazone with this EV spread, and it doesn't make sense to put the extra EVs in a special attack to up that chance, and I have a very minimal chance of Okoing a Choice Specs uh, Magnazone. So while I would hit 100% of the time, I would only have a 68% chance of Okoing. Well, with Fire Blast, I have an 85% chance of hitting, but when I hit, it's 100% chance of Okoing, and Magnastorm is 75% chance of hitting, and like 55% chance of Okoing. So Fire Blast overall is actually the best move, particularly against Magnazone, and it also hits just about everything hard. It hits everything really hard, actually. So that's why I have brought this Heatran. Um, it, the difficult part with Heatran is getting it in. So I can't switch it into too many things. I can be very careful about getting its leftovers knocked off. Um, this thing beats Porygon 2 so hard, uh, 1v1. And I can set up substitutes on switches and protect to allow myself to get maximum leftovers recovery, toxic things, and whittle things down so that one of my more offensive mods can sweep. But yeah, that's about Heatran. Um, Spideff and HP because bulk. Moving on, we have Zapdos. Again, running a special defensive set, very similar to last time. I'm running 20 speed EVs so that I outspeed a Choice Specs Magnazone, um, which is important because I can then roost on it. And then I take only 25 to 30% from Thunderbolt from a Choice Specs Magnazone, so I beat it 1v1, which is really nice. Um, I'm running Volt Switch so that I can bring in Heatran more often, so that I can bring in Hitmonlee and just threaten something out, like Porygon 2, which is his typical special wall. And I'm also running Heat Wave so I can hit Amoongus hard. And so I can hit Magnazone if he wants to keep that in, or even Mega Beedrill. Uh, Roost is there for obvious reasons. And Defog to get rid of those hazards that are really annoying for my team, in my opinion, especially because I'm trying to run a bolt in your team. And yeah, that pretty much covers it. Um, Zapdos is going to be really helpful for Starmie. If he brings bulky Starmie, please bring bulky Starmie. Um, as opposed to Offensive Starmie, this thing could be really helpful against it. I beat it 1v1. Um, I can go from Bolt Switch into Hitmonlee, and you'll, you'll see why Hitmonlee is good. Um, but yeah, this thing tanks hits. Does a good job. Moving on to Suicune. We've got our typical Crocoon. Last time, last time Max wrecked this Crocoon with Trick um, from Starmie, put a Choice Scarf on it, and it was devastated. I really, really wanted to bring Hyper Offense. But I just couldn't find it with this team. If Sam, if, I were, if we were playing Sam, I would have brought Hyper Offense with Smeargle, Choice Specs, Zapdos, Offensive, Calm Mind, uh, Suicune, maybe Specs, Heatran, like Choice Bandit, Salamence, and Mega Altaria. Like it would have been crazy, and I would have been so excited to do that. But against Max's team, we really don't have a lot of leeway. And Crocoon is so helpful. It can check Lander's T potentially. 
it can beat Starmie if it's not offensive, um, definitely. And if it is offensive, after one Calm Mind, I beat it 1v1 because of Rest Talk. I also beat Porygon 2 1v1, I beat Mandibuzz 1v1, um, I can tank hits from Typhlosion 2. Uh, I don't want to have to tank hits from Moongus, but if necessary, I can. He likes to run Clear Smog, which would allow him to beat me 1v1. Uh, this might be helpful against Malamar, it beats Regirock, it beats Hitmonchan, it beats might beat Articuno, I'm not sure, uh, beat Shellgun, and of course it beats Meowstic. So it's really important that I keep this thing alive as it's one of my few Mega Beedrill or Landorus T-Checks. And it can really help out with the taking some pressure off of Zapdos and Heatran in dealing with Porygon 2, Amoongus, and Mandibuzz, which are such bulky mons that he loves to bring. So moving on to Hitmonlee. Last time I didn't bring Hitmonlee, I actually brought Lipard with Sucker Punch to help deal with Starmie, but this Hitmonlee is able to do the same thing, but so much more. I am running Limber so that his Porygon 2 cannot paralyze me with, with uh, Thunder Wave, and I also don't like running inaccurate moves, so I didn't want to take advantage of Reckless um, with High Jump Kick or Stone Edge, etc. So I'm running Close Combat. It almost Oko's Porygon 2. It um, Oko's after Rocks. Uh, the Life Orb makes so much damage. Knock Off on Switchings uh, does a ton of damage, and more importantly, gets rid of items, which is really important. Uh, Sucker Punch Oko's Starmie, which is really important. And if he brings defensive Amoongus, he might switch that in on a close combat because it's resisted, but close combat into Blaze Kick is a guaranteed kill. So that's really helpful. Um, and Blaze Kick is also there if necessary for Mega Beedrill, though I don't think we take a hit from Mega Beedrill. Uh, if he wants to Swords Dance or something, I don't know. But there are very few switch ins for Hitmonlee um, that don't get to a KO, especially after Rocks. And speaking of that, here's, here's my Rocker, Ditto. Um, I didn't bring Stealth Rock on any of my Pokemon this time. And that's because I know he's going to bring a Stealth Rocker, and I'm going to have to play super, super well with Ditto. Ditto, able to do just about anything. Um, I didn't want to bring Choice Scarf, because Scarf is pretty bad against his um, like bulkier team, so Leftovers. I'm going to be using Ditto primarily to counter bulkier Pokemon, as opposed to switch in and steal boosts on more offensive Pokemon, because I don't want to risk Speed Ties. Um, primarily, Ditto is here for Landorus T. Uh, Landorus T counters Landorus T really well, and it's probably going to be his rocker. So Ditto is going to enable me to get up my own Stealth Rock, which is really nice. Um, I could potentially trap his own Magnezone if he's Specs. Um, I could end up with a Speed Tie. I could wall his own Starmie, potentially, if he's a bulkier set. I could do a ton of damage to his own Mega Beedrill. I could stall out some of his PPO and his Stallier Mons, like Mandibuzz, Porygon 2, and Amoongus. And more importantly, I now have a Grass Immunity with Amoongus. Um, if he wants to go for Spore, I can switch in Ditto and work as a pivot. Um, Ditto would obviously be immune to Grass type or Grass type like Spore moves, and would take minimal damage from everything else. And I'd be able to heal from Regenerator. And so on the um, Spore, I switch in, and then I could pivot into my Heatran. So. Ditto could be really, really important in this matchup, and I'm going to have to play super well with it based on the speed mechanics and really, um, really just playing well. That's what it comes down to. And then lastly, we have Salamence. Um, Life Orb, Intimidate Salamence with Outrage, Earthquake, Hidden Power, Ice, and Dragon Dance. This is another Landorus T counter. So Suicune is obviously a Landorus T counter. It takes 44 to 50. Per, it takes around 44 percent from an earthquake, though, which is not what I want to have to do. I don't want to have to let that thing get worried or weakened down because, like, um, Magnezone, Landorus T, Mega Beedrill, they all have the ability to wear it down. But it's so helpful against every other one of his mods. So I do want to play very carefully with it. Um, that being said, Salamence is probably going to be my lead. Uh, it's got HP Ice um, to Oko, Offensive Landers T, and do a ton of damage to Defensive Landers T. I also take around 50% from a Defensive Landers T, so, and I also outspeed. Um, I outspeed Max Speed Landers T, actually. So my play, because last time I brought Mega Altari, he had no idea why I brought it, or why I let off with it. Um, he was like, oh, free rocks, and just got wrecked by an Ice Beam. He's probably going to see Salamence as my lead, and if he leads off with Landers T, um, probably scout to see if I have HP Ice or Hydro Pump, and on that turn I Dragon Dance, and Outrage almost Oko's Amoongus after, or definitely almost Oko's Amoongus after Rocks. It's two hit KOs, Porygon 2, it two hit KOs, Mandibuzz, it does a ton of damage. And Earthquake, Oko's Magnezone, this is kind of a, here's a Landorus T counter, and Magnezone counter, and then once you've done one of those, or both of those hopefully, just put a huge dent in something to clear the way for another Pokemon. 
And Intimidate will be really helpful in helping Suicune wall things and rest talk eventually um, against Mega Beedrill or Landris T because uh, Salamence is also here for um, that Beedrill. But overall, this is going to be a super tough match. I'm, I'm super worried about it, but because there's so much pressure on me to play super well, I have to play a bit aggressively, making maybe some double switches to maintain switch priority because his team is bulky and it's really bulky when it's bulky and it's really strong when it's offensive. And I have to play that in-between area really well to be able to beat both of those. So, I'm hoping we can do it, and I hope you guys are ready to cheer me on in the final battle. But until then, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.